Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, today we're going to be playing with embossing and heat embossing, uh, but also emboss resist using pigment powders. Um, these are some uh, ones that I created before. And you can tell, you can see here that you get these beautiful, magical colors, but you still get your outlines of um, whatever your stamp is. So I did these a couple weeks ago for Valentine's Day. It's now February 13th. So um, yeah, but I thought we might have some fun. Somebody asked how I was doing this and I thought, okay, well, let's, let's show you them. Okay. Um, you can do this technique using um, any kind of background stamp. Actually, you can do it with uh, any open faced um, uh, flower stamp that you have as well. I don't happen to have any flower stamps, but if you've got like those really beautiful big bouquets that have all of the thin outlines and things like that, that's where it's going to work the best because you want to be able to have um, this and then have your color saturate and sit inside where um, the outline is. And uh, by using embossing powder, so stamping and using embossing powder and then heating it, we create these little dams or traps for our pigment in our water, so our color and our water to sit within. And uh, you get these beautiful um, different shades and tones and things like that. So I'm gonna be using a couple of different background stamps today. And I will also be showing you a variety of pigment powders because I have many of them and they all work together. So you don't have to have a full set syndrome of anybody's, um, just pick the colors that you like. So I have, these are uh, Colorcraft Brush Oak colors. These are an actual um, artist medium. Um, and uh, again, you see that there's a little thumbtack in here because you want, uh, when you're using pigment powders, you really do not want to be using a lot. So you can see that there's just teeny tiny little hole in there. That's as much as you want it coming out of. So I'm all, when I'm ready to use this, I'll tip it upside down and kind of tap on the thing, on the jar here. And uh, that's really all you want to be using. Um, anything more, uh, then you just, you're just getting too much and it goes everywhere. Um, so when you're using a pigment powder, pigment powders are becoming more and more popular right now because this is straight color. So if you were to buy a paint, basically the powder of what is in here is what they add to whatever your medium is for your paint. So if you want a watercolor, you can just have this, add some water to it and paint away. Um, you can add a pigment powder to your um, uh, stencil butters and things like that. So if you're going to uh, put a stencil down and you want to make your own color of um, glitter. So if you have a glitter paste or you have um, like a texture paste of some sort or gesso or whatever you want to use, you put it a little bit of pigment powder, mix it in to whatever your medium is, and then you can uh, scrape that across your stencil. Okay. So uh, the other thing that these are becoming uh, really popular in is a lot of people are starting to do a lot of resin crafts and this will tint your resin as well. Okay. So you're, you're going to find these more and more in a lot of um, art shops and uh, like scrapbooking stores and crafting shops and things like that. They're becoming really popular. Brush show is, is really hard to find here. Mine can actually came from the UK, but you have to go to a specialty, um, uh, craft store, like a, a artist store, because this is an artist quality medium. Um, these ones here, whoops, these are by Ken Oliver. These are Ken Oliver color bursts. And um, these are also artist quality, but these are a little easier to find at scrapbook stores and, and things like that. Um, Lindy's, this is another one. These are called Lindy's Magical Shakers. And um, this one actually has a little bit of mica in it. So it's got a little bit of shine to it. The Ken Oliver ones and the Brusho ones do not. They're just flat. Well, they're not flat, I mean, they're beautiful, but there's no um, mica, so there isn't any shimmer to them. They're just the color. Uh, the Magical Shakers, Lindy has Magical Shakers, which are in this size, and then she's also got some little pots. I don't have any of those ones, and those ones, I believe, are called Magical Powders, and they have, uh, like, a glitter and a shimmer in them. Um, and then uh, these ones are the Nouveau Shimmer, shimmer Powders. Okay. And uh, I think that there's another one called Sprinklets or something like that from Elizabeth Crafts. So you can find these in a multiple, um, multiple different genres, different uh, crafters, different um, companies are carrying these. Okay. 
So in any one of them, they all work together. You don't have to have just one kind. They uh, just pick and choose the colors that you like and that you want to use. Um, the Ken Oliver ones come in like a set of six or eight, which makes it really nice because then you get them all together. Um, same thing with the brushes. The brushes you get in six, eight, 12, 24 packs, something like that. Uh, but if you just want to try it out and play, the Shimmer, the Nouveau ones, they come in just uh, separate packages, like just little, little guys like that. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to start with then is my stamps. And so um, I've got a couple here. This is the, uh, I think it's a five by five, five inch by five inch. This is the um, Radiating Hearts one. I believe this is from Sign and Says Stamp. Um, another one that you're going to see, because I've already done some of the heat embossing, I've got this beautiful stars, um, which came out, this is another Simon Says Stamp one, came out uh, in their last Christmas one, but it looks like uh, stars, but it could also be a really cool snowfall as well. And the one that I'm currently going to show you is this one. So I've got it set in my stamp platform, and it's this really awesome geometric, I mean, you can't see that, just a minute. Okay, really awesome geometric shape here, which each of these little, um, so it kind of looks to me, this looks like stained glass a little bit. So I really, this is the one that I'm going to stamp right now just to show you how to, um, pretty much, I think everybody knows how to heat emboss, but we'll start at the beginning. So the first thing that I've done is I have put my stamp into my stamping platform here. Okay, um, If you don't have a stamping platform, you can just take your large stamp like this, lay it flat on your desk, and then put your cardstock onto it. Okay. But uh, this was a new stamp before I started using it. So I made sure to condition it by rubbing my fingers on it and stuff like that. That just takes the top coating off of um, my cardstock. And I'm going to add this in here. Now, this piece of paper, uh, this is an 80 pound um, accent opaque cover. So it's, it's quite nice and uh, um smooth but it's also what it's really nice for uh it it does fairly decently with watercolor and i'll show you a couple of tricks of of what i'm doing um but it holds up well enough with with watercolors and because uh when we're doing these pigment powders you use pigment powder and then you add water to it and you get these beautiful stunning colors so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to heat emboss so this is my new um embossing buddy or embossing powder tool and or anti-static powder tool. And so as I lift this up uh, to put it the little brush back in, it um, has a little hole in it and it pushes the anti-static powder up into here, which comes up into the brush. So then I'll close it like this, put this on the top, and then I can close it. And as I close that, it pushes the powder that's in here up into the brush more, which is really cool because I really don't like the feel of the bag and the talc and the whatever it is that's in the anti-static um, powder. I don't like getting it on my fingers. <laughs> it's one of the ways I get a little girly. So now I'm just going to brush that off and I'm going to take my VersaFine, or sorry, my VersaMark um, watermark uh, stamp pad. So this is my sticky ink, my clear sticky ink, and I'm going to stamp down and I'm going to ink up with my sticky ink my stamp. I'm going to take my door, the door of my stamp platform, push it over and it's going to go onto my paper. Now, um, if you like, there are a lot of really expensive crafting tools out there to help you smooth over. Because, of course, I could just push on here. But I want to make sure that I get a nice coverage all over my paper. So um, you can spend money on the uh, fairly expensive Debbie tool, which is really beautiful, which is a, like, it's like a, I think it's kind of like a crystal doorknob um, that they've put onto some uh, chunks of wood and then put felt or some sort of thing or chamois or something that makes it move nice and smooth over the top of your misty or your stamp platform and stuff like that. Um, I'm re-inking this because I did have powder down on my paper. So usually when you stamp the first time and then you lift it, you might actually be lifting up a little bit of the powder on your stamp. So you may not have gotten perfect contact with your stamp. So because I did take the time to put it in my stamp platform, I'm going to do this again. So as I was saying, you can um, certainly invest in one of the more expensive um, crafting tools that are 
made for stamping, things like that. I actually just got a uh, air hockey puck. <laughs> Works like a darn. So it's got the felt on it and it smooths over on this really nicely. The other thing that I used before I got my air hockey puck was a dry erase marker and that works or um, dry erase eraser and that works the same as well because basically all I'm trying to do is just uh, provide enough coverage and pressure so that um, not all my fingers because when I do something like this I might miss an area along here. This allows me to just go up and down up and down and make sure that I'm covering all of the areas without having to um, use a lot of strength in my fingers. Okay. So I've finished with this now. I'm going to pull this out that to the side for a second. Put that to the side. And let's grab some embossing powder. And yeah, I'm going to use I'm going to use my clear detail. <clears throat> so basically. So you're not going to be able to see anything, but um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the reflection in the light here. No, it's not. I'm not seeing it picking up on camera. But um, so I'm just going to use my clear embossing powder. So basically what that will do is all of the lines you won't be able to see it um, until I start adding some color. But um, it's going to basically make everything that's underneath, it'll keep it white because that's what's underneath my embossing powder. So uh, all of my lines will show as white. And I did some of these earlier. And uh, when you're embossing, it's really good to do everything all at once because your embossing tool gets nice and hot and everything um, embosses much quicker. But for the sake of time on the video, just gonna do the one here. Okay, so now you can start to see, I'm not sure if you can see, there you go. You can start to see some of the lines. You can see where my powder is. So I'm gonna pull out my heat tool here. So, and although this thing looks like a hairdryer, it is not a hairdryer. <laughs> um, it will get very, very, very hot, hot enough to melt embossing powder, et cetera. Um, it's just going to take a couple of minutes now, though, because uh, it's obviously it hasn't been heated up. What I like about this tool um, versus one of the um, stick heating bossings or heat tools is that this one is actually quiet enough that you can still hear my voice and I can still talk to you without uh, drowning you out. Because um, as you've heard on previous videos that I've done, I'm not. Um, this is one of the areas where I'm not super tech savvy, so I don't know how to edit and. Um, you know, when I'm watching videos, it's really hard to, when you get that heat tool and it's like just blasting. So um, I like that this one is not so bad that, uh, you know, it's it's blasting your guys' ears and everything. Um, just means, though, that I have to take a little bit of extra time because it doesn't blow air as much. This is actually really great if you're doing any kind of mixed media things. It can dry paint and... Um, Things like that dry uh, glue um, really, really well. That's why it was, this is a heat tool by Ranger. I'm not sure if it's picking it up on the camera yet, but you're starting to see, I'm starting to see here where um, now my lines are all starting to go nice and shiny. And this Winnie the Pooh thing that you're seeing here, it's just a, um, silicone hot pad like a trivet I actually got it at winners um, but any piece of silicone or something like that uh, will work and I, I just like to do it because it helps keep a lot of the heat off of my desk because uh, again this this tool does get hot enough that I could if I was embossing this directly on my desk I could actually melt the uh, melamine or whatever the coating on the top of my desk is so and it's just nice and squishy and you can open jars and all sorts of things like that but it works like a darn to heat up. Okay, so now you should be able to see. Ah, there we go. Now you can see where all of that really awesome shine is. So I'm just going to let that cool just a little bit. And grab my trimmer. So I want to, before I stick this in my trimmer, um, I just want to make sure that this is cool enough that when I put it in here, it's not going to. Um, 
It's not going to squish off any of my wall savings I put on here. Well, and I think I forgot to tell you what size of paper this was. So these papers are, uh, this is a eight and a half by 11 that I just cut in half. And uh, basically, um, so this is five and a half by eight. Well, it was eight before I cut it down. Um, now, so I've got myself some little um, dollar store clipboards, which is what I like to do when I'm doing um, any kind of water coloring or using water or something like that. And I need to put it aside to dry because it makes it easier to lift without having to get my fingers all on my project. Plus, it also allows me to tape this down, which also helps. So I don't have to use a watercolor or something like that. Like you, you can do this project with watercolor paper, which is fine. Um, the challenge is, is that definitely make sure that you're using your stamp platform because watercolor paper has so much texture that it's really hard to stamp on it. So you wanna make sure that what you're using, um, if you're not gonna use a stamp platform, don't use watercolor color paper because you won't get a great um, contact with uh, between your stamp and your paper. So you'll miss a lot of details. Now with this particular technique, because I, I consider this kind of a multimedia type technique. Um, so I, I'm not like super particular on having to have like great contact and things like that. But if you happen to notice um, when you're, uh, you know, when you when you finished your heat embossing, I'm not sure if you guys can see at the end here on this line, it didn't get perfect contact there. Now I'm planning on cutting this down so that it's, uh, let's see, my card base is five and a half by five and a half. So I'm gonna wanna do likely four and a quarter, five and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I'm gonna end up cutting that off. So I don't, I don't really, that doesn't bother me. But if, if it did, you could um, go in with, uh, well, if it was in your stamp platform still, you could put it back in your stamp platform, ink that up and re-emboss it. Or you can use a uh, a Versamark pen, just like this. Uh, and so you can pull that out. You'd be able to draw that along there. Then um, add. So basically, the ink that's in your Versamark pad, same thing as in here. So if I were to draw my line there, and I could put embossing powder on it then, and then reheat it up, and hopefully have a uh, much better contact. Okay. So now I'm just using some painter's tape to um, tape these down. And by taping it down, I'm giving the paper a little less opportunity to lift and curl. It, it will still curl because it's paper. Um, but what I like to do is kind of pull it taut, catch the edge, and I'm going to make sure that I'm giving a nice good seal along the edges here. Okay. And then I can fold it under and fold it under, like so. And then just fold it under. Okay. There we go. When I'm doing this particular technique, I like to do a few at a time because um, this is a very messy technique, or it can be. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And so when you're um, when you're doing this particular technique, you want to um, like I've got I've got four set here, which will give me the opportunity to. Um, show you but again when you're using these particular powders you want to make sure that you are um, you're in an area where you don't mind um, sometimes it's a good idea to wear grubby clothes um, or to uh, wear an apron or something like that because these things even if you're um, shaking them quite carefully still will make one heck of a mess so there are two ways now where you can do this you can Take and choose your colors. So I'm going to use the Ken Oliver ones. I'll start with the Ken Oliver ones. Um, this is Color Burst in Violet. And you can see I'm just gently tapping. And that actually had a huge um, droplet there. I think you can see that there. That's going to be a lot of pigment. And I'm just going to gently tap it onto Uh, my board here and I'm going to continue to add colors just picking whatever I think might make very interesting colors and you want to make sure that you're practicing the um, color wheel here so this one's called fallow green um, yeah you want to make sure that you're using your uh, maybe some indigo here 
your color wheel because you want to make sure you're not using colors. Oh, that's going to be a ton of color. Oh my goodness, that's going to be dark. Um, you want to make sure that you're you're practicing with colors that aren't going to make mud. So you know you don't want to be using like uh, like an orange and a purple. Then you're going to get a deep brown unless you're looking for brown. Maybe you're looking for brown. I don't know. Um, this is actually a lot of color on this one. But we'll see. Let's see. So that last one was ultramarine blue, and I'm going to use some turquoise here as well. Let's see if I can break up some of those deeper purples. When I trimmed down my cardstock, I also trimmed it down um, to give myself a nice lip here, so that I would end up having um, uh, enough to. Uh, hold down my paper without it impacting where my stamped area is going to be. Okay, so I've got all of these beautiful colors on here. Now I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer, any sprayer you can add. You just need to add water. Okay, look at how that bursts out there. So and we're just going to keep spraying until you decide that you're happy with what it looks like and what your colors look like. Now, I actually want some more color in here. So I'm going to try this uh, Terra Burt, which is a deeper green. I'm going to add that on. Because I want these colors to be really super rich. Let's get some lime green. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit more violet. So while I'm doing this, I, I thought I would talk to you guys about, I watched this really interesting, oh yeah, look at how nice and deep and dark that is. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I want to make sure that my colors, and you can see that I'm getting some overspray here. So in order to protect my computer and a few other things, I'm kind of keeping my arm just here so that I don't get too much overspray because I, I am definitely going to get overspray. Um, but while I'm, while I'm working on this, I want to talk to you guys about this really cool video series that I've been, um, that I saw recently and it's just about done. And it's by um, May May Made It, uh, which I think I've talked about. I think I've talked about her um, video channel before on my, on my, uh, on my channel, um, the folio that I did a couple weeks ago was by her. Yeah, I think that's going to be really, like, look at how nice and bright those colors are. So we've got a little bit of pickup here. And so I've got a paper towel. So I'm just going to dry off the areas here with the, with my fingers. And I don't even mind that it's going to cool in a couple of areas because some of that cooling is going to be like nice, deep, dark, intense, rich colors. And so I've got some um, area behind me here to um, set these so that they can dry. And the best bet is, and your best option I find, is to um, just let them dry on their own. Try and walk away if you can. If you're finding that you don't like it, you can either add more color, but also use a um, paintbrush to kind of move your color around. So as you can see, look at this, um, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, like a couple of little drops. Even though I was just tapping in this area, they still carried over. Not all of this is overspray. <laughs> Anyway, so I was watching this um, video series by Mei Made It Crafts, and she she started a new hobby. So she the uh, Mei Made It is a um, they have a, a few more they will. Um, she runs a card making or scrapbooking store, crafting store, basically out of the states, and uh, creates her own stamps and, and things like that. But she's decided because she's always wanted to quilt that uh, she wanted to take up quilting, so that's what she's started doing. And so she's watching herself as she's starting this new um, craft and she thought it would be a really good idea to notice some of the tra like track her habits and the, the ideas and how to go about doing this in a uh, maybe more um, <laughs> uh, maybe like a more 
sensible way. I, I don't know that sensible is the way is the word that I want to use, but in a way that it's not going to cost a fortune, right? Where you have to have everything, even though you don't know um, what you're going to like and what you're not going to like. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to do the one that I, uh, this is a, the Starburst one. And I think on these ones, I'm going to use my Color Burst. I haven't used these before. And so I'm kind of excited to, to try these out and see how they work. They're uh, fairly new for me. And so I'm looking forward to the opportunity to kind of play with them. And actually on this one, I wanted to do, do a bit of a spray to start with. So the color that I'm using here is cobalt blue. And if you can see, there's some reds and some purples in there as well, just by that one little shake that I did. And this way by um, spraying my paper to begin with, I'm hoping that some of my pigments will stick to the paper just a little bit better. Um, anyway, so she started this craft. Um, all over my shirt. And so she she's started to think about what are the what are the basics? What are the you know, like if you're going to start this um, hobby of paper crafting, what do you need? What do you want? What are, you know, like what are the minimums that you need to to start? You know, like cardstock, scissors and a, and a pen kind of thing. If you're just starting out, how much of everything that we buy do you, do you need in order to just start out? And, um, and it's a really fascinating, and I think she did a really great job. And so she starts right from the basics to, um, you know, like when you get into things like crickets and your electronic die cutting machines and things like that. And, um, and I just found it a really great, and I, so I really recommend that uh, it's a good place to, to um, start or to, to watch if you, if you're just getting into paper crafting of any kind, whether it's scrapbooking or card making. Um, I found it really, really helpful. So this color here that I'm trying to, that I'm tapping on, it's called Emerald Green, which is where I'm getting a little bit of this green and this yellow. And one of the things, so now I'm gonna try some purple. So I'm doing cobalt blue, turquoise, emerald green, and purple. Um, one of the other things that I found really interesting, and when she was talking about this, she, you know, she talked about doing research and and um, taking the time to really look into your craft and to to see what it is that you need and and um, all of those kind of things beforehand. And it got me thinking because um, a lot of the things that I ended up adding to my crafting. Um, was because I was watching what a lot of my friends were doing. And I was so enamored and just thought, oh my God, what you're creating is just beautiful. I want to do that. What I failed to do, though, was to take into consideration what my personal style is like and what I like to craft like. It doesn't negate the beauty of what they can create. It just doesn't necessarily always work the same. Um, and so I was investing and purchasing all of these things that ended up having um, not the greatest effects for me because it ended up, um, I was the one who ended up purchasing these items, but it never ever fit my style. So I could never make it as beautiful as what my friends were doing. And so I always felt like such a failure instead of the reality is, is that that style doesn't particularly work for me. So what I, now what I do is I really make sure and I look at it does that particular product, is it going to fit and work for how I like to design, how I like my house, for example, how I like my cards to look, how I like, um, you know, like how I like to dress. Same, same thing, you know, um, lots of my friends have this really amazing style and they look so classy. And when I try it, I just look ridiculous because for me, I'm much more casual. I'm more simple. And it, it doesn't mean that their particular style is wrong or anything or my style is wrong. Oh, that's a lot of it. Um, it just, it, but if I didn't get to that point, you know, there's, I, I have so many supplies and so many things in my craft room that I don't necessarily use because it, I, I don't, I don't like how I feel or how it works for me because 
that is not how I prep. Okay, so you can see that I had a little bit of extra water on there. So I've just mopped that up a little bit uh, just to give myself a little bit of extra because um, I want I wanted the paints to move around a little bit more. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. I think that those are going to be really pretty colors. This will be a really nice, um, uh, I think that will actually be a, make a really nice birthday card. So I'm just going to leave it. So some of this, some of this deep, intense color here where all the water is pooling, that'll work out okay. So this will, this end on this side will probably be a little lighter and this is going to be a little darker. So I'm going to put that to the side to let it dry. So those were the brushers, brush O's. I'm just going to wipe this down here. Underneath. Yeah. Okay, so now those ones tended to go a little less uh, all over the place, <laughs> which is nice. All right. So, so I am going to do all four of these uh, just to give you an idea of how each one of these powders work. Okay. Not that they're um, any different, obviously, but uh, so this one is the silver stained glass one. Okay. And this one I'm going to use the Lindy's on. So I just think these will be kind of fun. Now on the Lindy's ones, you'll see that they've got a, uh, on the inside, so they've got a sprinkle one. And then when you open this one, it's a lot like your spices. So it's got a much thicker um, dab point. Or a full point. I'll open that one so you can see. Okay. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you're using the one that is slightly, uh, you want to use the sprinkle it one. Because obviously, as I said, these come out fast. You don't need that much. And uh, if you don't like getting inks and things like that on your fingers, make sure that you uh, wear gloves. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a lot of powder there. Oops. Get right out of that last green. Okay, and I make sure that I spray this enough that I activate all of the little granules, because okay? that's where all of the color is. So if you don't activate those granules, they're not going to move around on you. You're not going to get the deep color. All you're going to get is these little weird kind of splotches. You want to make sure that you're getting enough water on there that it is acti actually activating your powder. Well, that's going to be kind of cool. Lots of green down this way. I think I'm going to try and add a little bit more blue over here. So the fun thing about this particular project is that, um, you know, you really don't have a lot of control. I can say that I want to add some more blue and whatever over here, but I don't really get a lot of say in where... By the time this is all dry, where this is going to end up at. So this is the other nice reason for using a, um, a clipboard, because it gives you the opportunity to kind of tip, move your color around while it's wet in these puddles. So in, right now, it kind of looks a bit like a hot mess, and that's okay. That's that's fine. That's you know that's not the end of the world. Um, I do like to sometimes I will pick up a piece of like a paper towel or kitchen towel, whatever you want to call it, and I will dab up some of them. But I don't like to dab up all of it because if you do that, then you're robbing yourself of all of that really deep, intense color. These panels, um, like I said, they're they will be, this is five and a half this way, um, and then five and a half, but I can trim them down. So you can still, even though you're using this big, um, big piece of card kind of thing, you can still um, trim it down so that it ends up being, I'm just gonna move that along there a little bit. There we go. Um, 
Yeah, you can still trim this down to a regular A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half, no problem. And there's one more here. Let's clean this up. Now I'll show you the Nouveau Shimmer powders. So these ones did spread just a weensy bit here. Ooh. And here too. Okay, last one. So in this one is the stained glass one um, done with uh, gold Edam glossing. And we're going to use these Nouveau Shimmer Powders. Yeah. This particular color here is called, let's see if I can find it, Golden Sparkler. And these ones are really cool because they have a lot of different colors in them. So you can see here, this one's got like a yellow base, but it's also got some blues, some reds. And uh, yeah, so you get these really different. Um, actually, maybe you can't see that. That might be too far away. So there you go. Blues, reds. This one here is Lunar Rocket, which is kind of their silverish color or grayish color. This is going to kind of be my bases. So in this one has kind of a grayish and a turquoise with a little bit of red in it. So now I want to add, I'm going to add some yellow. Ooh, that kind of fell out. And that one is sun ray. And then I've got this really pretty falling leaves. And those are the colors. So this one's obviously going to be the more um, Springish, I guess, kind of colors. I guess is what I would call it. <laughs> you can see here I ended up with quite a puddle of green. So I want to make sure that I get I want that all moving. I don't want any of it piled up in those. And then if you feel like, so seeing as how my fingers are already pretty, pretty coated, I can just take my fingers and move a lot of that around as well. So it's going to have this green tint to it all the way around here. Do this before I stick my sweater in it. Okay, so those are a little light, so I want to add some more. Because I do like... I like a lot of deeper tones. Not everybody likes the deeper tones, but I like the deeper tones. I might have to add some of the magical Lindy's just because it's got a darker green on it. But we'll see. Yep, I'm going to add some of the darker green. <laughs> So a lot of this for me is a little like alcohol. You know, if you don't like it, just keep playing. You can um, add water, you know, or add different colors. The only time you don't want to start adding more is if, you know, you're getting close to getting um, brown, right? Because once you're down at brown or black, you, you ain't going anywhere from there. That's not changing. The only thing what you could do is if you had brown is add some more reds into some different areas and things like that. Reds or oranges and create like a really nice fall background, right? That would be really quite pretty. So, and if I had prepared better, I would actually have my little paintbrush here, because you can also dip a paintbrush in to kind of move these colors around too, but it's off to the side here someplace, and I don't know, my fingers are already pretty covered, so why not play with that? I'm liking that green, it's really quite lovely. Let's try some lime green. So this one's actually going to have a few of the um, different powders mixed together. So I've used some of the Lindy's and some of the Ken Oliver's color bursts. Move my finger in and around that. Oh, 
Well, that's kind of a cool color. Yeah, another piece of paper, a paper towel to kind of soft that up a little bit, I think. There you go. I like that deeper tone there, so I'm going to keep a little bit of that. Let's see, let's do Move that around like that. So I'm going to get some nice deep tones in here. Okay. It's going to have this kind of watercolory wash back effect here where the um, puddling is. So I, it will show some watermarks and things like that, which is fine. That's not going to be the end of my world there. I like it. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one to the side now and let it dry. So these will be dry, you know, and usable by the next day. Kind of thing. Give it a couple of hours for it to really absorb into your paper, and you're good to go. Okay. So you've seen uh, a demo now of all four of the types of one, two, three, four. Yeah, I have four different kinds of pigment powders, and you've seen how all of them work. Um, if you have just the uh, like color burst, uh, these ones, or the brush -os, and they don't have the shimmer, like the um, Nouveau Drops or the Lindy's. It doesn't have shimmer, and you would like it to have a little bit of shimmer. You can add a little bit of the white color of pigment pearls to your spray bottle, and then you'll have that really beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Okay, So I'm just going to clean this off and move this out of the way, and then I will get to, we'll make the card. That and so when you're using pigment powders, the really hilarious things about them is that you will find little bits of pigment for days as every time you clean up. So just you know, give as much of your surface a wipe as you can, um, but don't be surprised if you happen to wipe it a day later or something like that, and you happen to find a little bit of pigment powder off to other areas of your um, crafting area because it travels. Somehow it travels. All right, so that's mostly clean and I've done my fingers as much as I can for now. All right, before I go. This is dry. Yeah, this is dry. There we go. All right. So, like I said, these are the ones that I had done previously. So, I did these a week or two ago, and um, I was making a Valentine's card. So, um, in order to kind of move the video along, what I've done here is I've taken this is a card that is five and a half by five and a half square. Okay. And I've uh, put a really pretty piece of magnet or magnetic uh, metallic cardstock on it in a color that coordinates with the ones that I was using. The cardstock that I'm using is the Tim Holtz Metallic Confections. Um, and this is really beautiful, beautiful cardstock. It's an 8x8 pad, has 36 in it. And um, it's craft on the backside. I don't know if you can see that or not there, but it's craft on the backside. And so these are, as you can see, I've, I've been using this pad. There's actually two of them. This is kind of the more pastel-y um, uh, pad. And then there's one that is brights but it's i mean it's it's not but it, it's a brighter color so these are kind of the goes with his distress line and things like that so so i have trimmed that down to uh so my card is five and a half by five and a half so i have traced um cut this down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter and i have already trimmed down my extra panel that i had so this is one that i did of the hearts the uh, radiating hearts um with uh purples and like an emerald green and a little bit of turquoise in it. And then out of the leftover from my cardstock here, um, or my metallic cardstock, I also cut out the Happy Valentine's Day sentiment, which I layered three times. So I've got, it's three layers deep. So there's two of white and one of the um, metallic cardstock. And then this is another trick when you're using um, something that you have uh, added a lot of water to, use foam tape to mount it. Okay, so I've got a lot of foam tape on here, regular, rather than your regular adhesive, because it will help add stability behind your um, piece that you have used a lot of water on. So in order to do that, I'm gonna already added my foam tape. Heat budge. 
Somebody remind me that uh, I have to clear that last one there and that one too. There we go. So this foam tape I actually got from the dollar store. It's actually photo mounting tape that you can get in their hardware section, but it works really great because it's not like super thick foam tape. I really like it. Plus it's only like a dollar fifty. And uh, I, this is this is one of the areas where I get cheap. You know, I've got good tools and I get good paper and things like that. Good quality card stock, um, you know, and my art supplies such as these things and my brush outs and stuff. Those things are really expensive. But this is one of the areas where <laughs> when I can, I cut corners. It's, it's you know, it's it's pretty funny. It's it, it says a lot about me as a person, but it is what it is. It's one of those areas where I don't spend a lot. So now I'm just kind of. Um, and eyeballing it's not going to be perfect and that's okay because I, I don't you know it's handmade whatever okay so now I've, I've added my card front onto here so I've got this beautiful little purple layer around here and I've got my happy valentine's sentiment and then I pulled out a couple of little um, uh, colored pearls here and um, I've got a variety of them and I'm just going to check and see like which colors I like the best so I've got like purples and oops, this would be easier if I put my jewel picker but uh yeah so i've got like turquoises and kind of a, a greeny color and some purples and i'm just going to add some gems on here and so there's a variety of sizes and uh, you can get these in different places crafty Meraki carries um which is a canadian company uh carries uh gem, um, colored pearls like this i just tend to buy mine off of aliexpress and I like the, um, you can get a variety pack and then it comes with these variety of, of sizes and, and things like that, which I think is really nice. I'm trying to get this silly pearl to turn the right side over. There we go. And I don't think I want, so I like this really big one in that bag. And I like a big one in the purple. Come on, turn over the other way. Oop. Okay, so it's a darker purple, and then there's kind of this reddish color, which I don't think fits. So I'm going to leave that one behind, and I've got this deeper purple here. So in this little uh, jewel picker that I got is actually for people um, like salons when they're doing your nails and things like that. That's bloody handy so you can get like it's got a little wax tip on it which is you can take off and replace which is great but whenever you're getting a jewel picker of any kind you want to make sure that you're getting a white or a light color because if this um you know if you get to the point where you're putting on all your jewels and if you happen to like if you have the black um there's one called the crystal katana and it has a black tip on it and if you scrape that against your card it actually will leave a black mark behind which you might not be able to remove but what i like about this particular one is it also has this really sharp tip so you can pick it up push it down and then turn it around and you can push it into your glue to hold it for just a second which is nice okay so i think i kind of want to do like these lighter colors down here so i've got this light purple and i've got this light turquoise and i like that and then no, well, it's kind of the same one, so let's put that one away. Okay. And then I like these darker on this side, but I want to do the darker here and this dark purple. And we will get a couple of lighter. Yeah. I'm gonna get that closer maybe to the green area. Like that. Yeah. Okay, so those jewels are gonna sit like that. Uh, I don't need as many, so like the bigger ones before the smaller ones. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be really nice. Okay, so that's the layout that I like. I'm just going to grab my liquid adhesive here. 
I'm using Barely Arts Glitter Glue, or sorry, Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. This is another area where I, this is where I will spend my money is on a good, a good glue. Good adhesive. <laughs> Although that's kind of a contradictory in terms, especially since how I just told you I won't spend it on my, on my phone tape. <laughs> but my double-sided tape, I spend good money. That's usually um, Suquang or something similar. And um, yeah, my liquid adhesive, I use uh, Barely Art glue or um, Art Glitter glue. Those are really the best that you'll find for adhesing. Adhesing, that's not a word. Um, but for using to hold your items onto your projects, they are they will glow, uh, dry perfectly clear um, and they're good value. There are other really great glues out there. Um, the challenge is, is that they tend to get really quite pricey. So two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nope, nope, nope. That is a, an even number. We don't do even numbers. Our brains don't like even numbers. So let's take maybe this dark one. Maybe this super light purple. Dark red. You know what? I can't get the blinking thing to or so we'll just add right there. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put my pin back in my piece of. All right. So that is my card project for today. So it's got lots of shine, really deep color. Yeah, just looks really, really pretty. This is going to be a lovely Valentine's card, probably for my mom. But anyway, thanks so much for joining me today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our project um, uh, embossing with uh, emboss resist with um, pigment powders. If you have any questions, by all means, please leave them in uh, questions or comments. Please leave them in the comments below. I do uh, make an effort to check with them and uh, answer them all. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, maybe turn on the notifications. I'm, I'm not the best at, at uh, you know, regularly updating, so I hope that I can uh, make that happen a little bit more. I'm trying to get at least two videos a month, and yeah, so you want to be notified when they come out. Anyway, talk to you later. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.